The accident occurred here at the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant a dozen miles south of Harrisburg. Workers in their cars were checked and rechecked for radiation. Some was found. Officials say some 50 to 60,000 gallons of radioactive water escaped into the reactor building and that the radioactivity penetrated the plant's walls. Geyser of steam that was uh, raising up in the air. Some radioactivity had escaped. Our first stop in Pennsylvania is along the scenic banks of the Susquehanna River. This is where you'll find a lasting symbol of America's failed love affair with nuclear energy. Okay, I know that I'm backlit right now and you probably don't see me very well. But just think of this, where I am standing right now, if I was standing here back in 1979, I would probably be exposed to a significant amount of radiation because the reactors were just right on the other side of this river bank behind me. It's pretty close. I imagine this road here that I'm standing along probably was closed when the incident happened. On the morning of March 28, 1979, reactor number two at Three Mile Island nuclear power plant overheated, leading to a release of radioactive water and steam into the atmosphere. The lack of cooling in the reactor led to a partial meltdown of its core. You can see these towers are just decaying and rusting. Nobody's paying the money to keep them maintained or painted because they're not being used anymore. I don't think much training goes on here at this training center. The communities around the plant were evacuated and testing revealed some areas having radiation levels seven times higher than normal background levels. Today the plant is now offline and the area the government now considers is safe. These ominous cooling towers, something I remember seeing on TV as a kid, can be seen from nearby neighborhoods in the marina. Most of the locals act like it's not even there. It's been a fixture along the skyline for so long. We were pretty close to it last year on a boat. <laughs> Next, I wanted to head into town to capture the contrast between the neighborhoods and those iconic cooling towers looming over them. I noticed in many of the photographs back in the 70s, the photographers used telephoto lenses to compress the towers with the local community buildings. We got the Leica 135 Apo Telet M, most telephoto uh, prime. Well, I think that's the best we're going to get out of 135 millimeters from this vantage point. If I had my L-mount camera with me, I would try two or even 400 millimeters and see what that would have done. So let me ask you all, what do you think? Do you think Leica should come out with even more telephoto lenses beyond 135 millimeters? Or do you think the M system just isn't practical for it? Put it in the comments below. Next, it was time to head out to the country, Amish country. came across a few Amish farmers plowing their fields. Then I noticed one was about to cross the road. Time to get ready.
interesting little train museum here and convenient must have been another photographer here with some wire cutters in this little hole here We crossed over this railroad cut bridge, and I later learned this is an area where a lot of soldiers died during the battle. I'm still in love with the classic look the Leica Thambar renders. Just makes these photographs look so timeless. And a picture for the crazy photo collection. Someone thinks there's an authorized dumping area at Gettysburg Battlefield. With storms looming on the horizon, it was time to head to Hershey. Hi, my name is Alex. Grinding turns cocoa mix into the smooth, dark liquid used to make milk and dark chocolate. Inside their gift shop, it was pretty cool to get all these different kinds of candy bars you can't find in your regular store. Isn't it a real horseshoe ball? Oh, yeah, I'll send this <laughs> Once we got back outside, I had to shoot those iconic smokestacks on the factory. And those amazing rays of light coming out of the clouds. Wow. Now, across from Hershey Park is the Milton Hershey School. So I came up here to take some nice pictures of this beautiful Art Deco building to only find this right here. All right, that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching the entire thing. I just learned this new statistic that most people tune away from YouTube videos in the first few minutes. So if you're still here right now, that means so much to me. Also, I know you hear this all the time all over YouTube, but Please, if you could, if you haven't already, like and subscribe and also pass on our channel to any of your photographer friends or anyone that enjoys travel. We could definitely use more viewers and more subscribers. We're a new channel and every little bit helps. So thank you so much. We'll catch you in the next video. And here's a few more pictures that weren't in the video, some bonus ones. All right, we'll catch you around. Bye.